The crisp mountain air filled my lungs as I stepped off the ski lift, the sharp scent of pine mingling with the chill of freshly fallen snow. The sky was a brilliant blue, and the sun sparkled off the pristine slopes. It was the perfect day for skiing, and my friends and I were eager to tackle the mountain. As we geared up, excitement buzzed through our group. This trip had been planned for months, a much needed escape from our hectic lives. I clicked into my skis, the familiar sensation grounding me. The thrill of the descent awaited, but a strange unease gnawed at the edges of my mind. I brushed it off, attributing it to pre-ski jitters. We started down the first run, the wind whipping past as we carved our way through the powder. The adrenaline rush was exhilarating, each turn slicing through the snow with satisfying precision. The smells of the mountain, clean, cold air, and the faint metallic scent of the snow were invigorating. As the day wore on, we decided to venture to a more secluded part of the mountain. The trail was marked as advanced, but we were confident in our skills. The path was narrower, the trees closer together, casting long shadows that danced on the snow. The sense of isolation grew with each turn, the laughter and chatter of other skiers fading into the distance. Halfway down, the weather turned abruptly. Dark clouds rolled in, blotting out the sun and plunging us into an eerie twilight. The wind picked up, howling through the trees and carrying a bitter cold that cut through our gear. The scent of pine became sharper, mingled with the ominous smell of an approaching storm. We should head back, I shouted to my friends, my voice barely carrying over the wind. They nodded in agreement and we turned to retrace our path, but the storm descended faster than we anticipated, the snow falling thick and fast, obscuring our tracks. Visibility dropped to near zero, and the once familiar trail now seemed foreign and threatening. Panic set in as we realized we were lost. My heart pounded, and I struggled to keep calm, the cold air burning in my lungs with each breath. The snow underfoot was no longer a comforting blanket, but a treacherous trap hiding rocks and branches that threatened to trip us. We huddled together, trying to figure out our next move. The storm was relentless, the wind whipping snow into our faces, making it impossible to see more than a few feet ahead. The scent of fear hung in the air, palpable and suffocating. Over there, Jake shouted, pointing to a shadowy structure, barely visible through the snow. It looked like an old cabin, half buried in the drifts. Desperation drove us forward, stumbling and slipping through the deep snow. The smell of damp wood and musty air hit us as we forced the door open, collapsing inside with relief. The cabin was dark and cold, but it was shelter. We lit a small fire in the old stone fireplace, the smell of burning wood mingling with the mustiness of the room. The flickering flames cast long shadows, and the heat slowly seeped into our frozen limbs. For a moment, we felt safe. But as the firelight danced, I noticed something odd. Strange symbols were carved into the walls, their jagged lines seeming to writhe in the flickering light. An uneasy feeling settled over me, the hairs on the back of my neck standing up. The smell of burning wood suddenly seemed acrid, the warmth of the fire oppressive. What do you think those mean? Lily asked, her voice trembling. She pointed to the symbols, her face pale in the firelight. I don't know, I admitted, a knot of dread forming in my stomach. But I don't like it. As the storm raged outside, the wind howling like a banshee, we heard a faint rhythmic tapping. It seemed to come from beneath the floorboards, growing louder and more insistent. My heart raced, and I felt a cold sweat break out despite the heat of the fire. Is someone down there? Jake whispered his eyes wide with fear. We moved cautiously, lifting a loose floorboard to reveal a dark, narrow staircase descending into the earth. The smell of damp earth and something rotten wafted up, making me gag. The tapping continued, a steady, unnatural rhythm that set my nerves on edge. We should leave, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. Now. 
But before we could move, the floor gave a sudden violent lurch. The cabin creaked and groaned, the symbols on the walls glowing with an eerie light. A bone-chilling scream echoed from below, a sound that seemed to claw at my sanity. We scrambled to the door, but it wouldn't budge. The windows were frozen shut, the glass thick with frost. Panic surged, and I felt trapped, the air heavy with fear and the stench of decay. With a surge of adrenaline, I grabbed the old iron poker from the fireplace and swung it at the figures. They recoiled, hissing, but more took their place. We fought desperately, the cabin filled with the smell of burning wood and fear, the air thick with our screams and the sounds of battle. Suddenly, the door burst open, the storm's fury flooding the cabin. We tumbled out into the snow, the cold a shocking contrast to the heat of the fight. We didn't stop to look back, running through the blinding snow, until we stumbled onto a familiar trail. Exhausted and battered, we made our way back to the main lodge. The warmth and light were a welcome relief, but the smell of the cabin's decay and the feel of those icy hands lingered. We reported the incident, but when a search party went out, they found no trace of the cabin. That ski trip was supposed to be a joyous escape, but it turned into a nightmare. The mountain's beauty now held a sinister edge, and the memories of that night haunted us. We had escaped the frozen terror, but the shadows of that cabin would never leave us.